Okay, in today's video, we're going to be looking at this. It's not a replica. It's not exactly a clone. Well, it's a it's an Altair 8800 computer. So yeah, this is my Altair 8800 computer. It's not by any means original. In fact, all I've really actually made here is the case and the presentation. I bought this panel and I've just assembled it. So I've done none of the really clever stuff of creating the emulator and putting all the electronics together and so on. I've actually just put it in a box. It's not intended to be a faithful replica. It's just I fancied something that had a little bit of the look and feel of the Altair 8800, the original. So anyway, so what we'll do, we'll just spend the first part of the video looking at how I put this box together and how I built this case. And then we'll come back and have a look and see what you can do with an Altair 8800. Okay, now you may recall at the tail end of last year, I got really excited about something I'd bought. And it was this. And it is an Arduino clone of the Altair 8800 computer. Really the first commercially available home and business computer. Now it may not look like a computer to you, you're probably used to seeing things with keyboards and screens. This is actually the device that gave birth to the home and business computer revolution. Well, this is a replica of it, obviously. I can't afford the real thing. It would cost more than about half a year's salary to actually get one in working order and get it all up to speed. So this is an Arduino replica. So it uses an Arduino to emulate the 8080 processor and all of the other hardware that was inside the Altair 8800. However, despite my initial excitement, I didn't actually do anything with this. I just kind of put it away and forgot all about it. So anyway, let's put that right today. Today we're going to make a case for this so that we can actually start using it and playing with it. So I've been off to B&Q. Now I could just go and cut the timber and stuff myself, but actually I cheated. And I've been off to B&Q and asked them to cut me some MDF to the exact size that I want. And so I'm just going to make a little MDF case for this. It's going to look a bit like that. And then we're going to fit it into this case. We're going to glue that all together, spray paint this case in the correct M MITS blue, and then we're going to fit that into there. Now I've left a little bit of space at the bottom. I've done that on purpose because it's going to have the Altair 8800 logo on there on a nice piece of brushed aluminium. So let's put the device away and build ourselves a wooden box.
So the question is going to be, I guess, what can you do with an Altair 8800 computer? What can you actually do with it that's practical and useful? Well, it is a computer. It is arguably the first practical computer that was available to business and home users as a device that they could actually do something productive with. And it's a computer in the same way that your desktop PC is a computer. It's capable of many of the same things, just it's got a different interface. It's got a, a very, very simplistic interface for programming. Let's just have a look. So we can actually go through. So we're going to cycle through some memory locations here. And so anyway, we're going to deposit some data into this memory location. Let's just put that bit pattern into that memory location. And now when we if we examine that memory location, which was those four bits, we can go and examine. And there we go. That's the data that I put in there. And we can cycle through the next ones. Let's go back to back to the address before that, which will be there we go. So there's the data that I put in. And of course, that data would represent either pieces of discrete data or it would represent instructions for this computer. And so if you knew the language, if you knew the, the machine code for this, you would program it in byte by byte into the well, bit by bit on these switches into the memory of the computer. And then you'd better run it just using the run button here. I haven't got a program loaded at the moment. And people did that. People wrote programs and entered them all bit by bit, byte by byte, into memory, and then ran them. And that's how the first computer programs were written. And in fact, what, what people wrote on here was things like, um, they wrote disk operating systems, they wrote the basic language, and then they were able to run the basic language on here. So we'll have a look in a minute what else you can do with this, because you can connect a terminal to this, and we can get text output out of it, and we can actually see something that makes a little bit more sense to our more modern eyes. But let me just show you one more thing. This Arduino clone of the 8800 comes preloaded with a bunch of disk images and a bunch of ready-made programs. And I can actually load the most famous program for the Altair 8800, which is a game called Kill the Bit. And so I can load that in there. And now it's playing Kill the Bit. And what you have to do here is actually you have to try to, try to flip that switch when that light is there. And if you miss, you create more dots. And so... There we go, I've won. Anyway, well, let's have a look at some more complex and perhaps advanced things we can do with the 8800. I'm just gonna connect a terminal to it and then we can actually have a look at some programming. So that might seem really silly to, to be connecting a very complex modern computer to a very basic vintage computer in order to get some text out of it. Why don't I just work on here? Well, the point is back in the day, there were none of these things. And of course, people would just connect a dumb terminal to these things. And that the dumb terminal, it was just like a machine that all it had was a screen and a keyboard and some very, very basic electronics. And it would send characters and receive characters. That's all it could do. So let's plug the 8800 into the USB port of my computer. And we will emulate a serial terminal. And we'll see what output we can get out of it. I'm going to switch to screen recording now. Okay, there we go. So I've actually got a bunch of text. This text here has come from the 8800 and it's telling me what I can actually do here if I move switches around on the right hand bank of input switches. And so I can do what I did before, which is if I set the switches to, to all the zeros and then one zero and press down aux one it will load kill the bit. But let's do something perhaps a little bit more interesting. Let us load up 16K ROM basic. So the pattern I've got to put in there is, is 110. And there we go. So the prompt on the screen is asking me for the memory size and I'm just gonna put in, I'm just gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask me what kind of printer I want and I'm just going to put, oh, that's apparently what we do. And there we go. We are in a basic programming language environment right now. 
So here's what we have to do, obviously, when we do basic, this is the first thing you always do. Well, actually, the first thing you do after Hello World There we go, that is a program that is running on the Altair 8800, displaying on my more modern laptop, but the program itself is actually running on the Altair 8800. So there's a lot of other things you can do on here, obviously. This machine emulator comes with a bunch of disc images, and we can load discs, we can play Zork, we can play Star Trek, we can play a bunch of really, really good text-based vintage games on there on the 8800. I think we'll probably have a look at those in a different video. So I think that's all we'll look at for now. That is the Altair 8800 Arduino clone. And yeah, like I say, all I've really done is make a nice box that has a little bit of nostalgic value for it so that I can enjoy that myself. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.